microscopic direct examination of the blood is an old-fashioned, state-of-the-art tool from parasitology. So if you had malaria as one of your differential diagnoses, direct examination of the blood would be a preferred method of diagnosing malaria because the parasites appear, they appear in blood, and they're most easily identified when the patient has spikes of fever. You draw the blood during the fever spikes, you look for the malaria parasites, and if you find the parasites, then you can make a diagnosis of malaria. There is now underway a uh, team of uh, researchers who want to apply the direct blood examination, which is used in malaria and which is used in the diagnosis of other parasitic diseases, such as sleeping sickness and Chagas disease and other parasitic diseases that involve blood, leishmaniasis, to Borrelia infections and to the diagnosis of other co-infections, which are not Borrelia, but infections which are tra uh, transmitted by the same tick which transmits the Borrelia. They travel with the Borrelia, and these co-infections include babesiosis, anaplasmosis, ehrlichiosis, uh, and other uh, parasitic infections that can be transmitted at the same time as Borrelia is transmitted. So one tick bite can give you two, three, four, five infections simultaneously. So discovery infections in the blood by diagnosis, by microscopic examination, seeing the parasites in the blood, in some situations gives you a diagnosis. It is very helpful in the co-infections. When you see the proper changes in the blood, you can make a diagnosis of babesiosis, or you can make a diagnosis of ehrlichiosis, or bognolosis, or anaplasmosis, or other co-infections which travel with Lyme disease. So let's start looking at the patient blood under the microscope for God's sakes. Even if antibodies in blood are never produced. You may be gratified and the patient may be helped by a microscopic examination of the patient's blood. Now, Dr. Lani has developed a direct blood microscopic examination of Norwegian patients who have chronic, I'm saying that's chronic, Borreliosis. And lots of his patients are hunters and spend their time outside in the uh, forests of Norway and are exposed to ticks and get many tick bites. And uh, they will, in certain cases, develop Borrelia infections of the European type. And they may develop co-infections, like Babesiosis, or Bignolosis, or Ehrlichiosis, or Anaplasmosis. And so he, the uh, patients may have multiple parasites in the blood. Dr. Lani is interested in looking at their blood and seeing if he can make a diagnosis to help with the patient diagnosis and management. Here's one of the structures that Dr. Lani has identified in human blood. What is it? It's right here. What are we looking at? We're looking at some sort of a snake-like structure. It's inside a round structure. And I'll give you a hint. This round structure is a red blood cell from human blood. And this snake-like structure is a Borrelia spirochete. So, what has Dr. Lani identified? He's identified the Borrelia spirochete in human blood, but it has penetrated and infiltrated and set up housekeeping inside a red blood cell. So the clues, well, it's rolled up. It's inside a red blood cell. It's snake-like. It came from microscopic examination, patients from Norway, and the patient has chronic Borrelia infection. 